Hello everyone, my name is Gabby Niski and I'm with the United South and Eastern Tribes as the HIV program coordinator. This is our behavior health track. Our session will be focusing on implementing community level prevention programs during a pandemic. I'd like to introduce our presenter, Chanel Cook and Michelle Lauren, who unfortunately is unable to be with us today, but served in a great portion of this presentation. Chanel Cook is of the Aquasasne Mohawk Nation and belongs to the Snipe Clan. She graduated from SUNY Potsdam with a bachelor's in psychology. She is the prevention education supervisor for the St. Regis Mohawk Health Services, alcohol, al alcoholism, chemical dependency prevention program. Chanel facilitates the Aquasasne Coalition from Community Empowerment and the Aquasasne Suicide Prevention Committee. Nichelle Lauren is of the Aquasasne Mohawk Nation from the Aquasasne New York. She graduated from SUNY Postum with a bachelor's in sociology. Nichelle is a prevention educator with the St. Regis Mohawk Tribes Health Service Alcoholism Chemical Dependency Prevention Program. She has been with the ACDP program for three years. Her role gives her the opportunity to work with local schools to implement substance abuse prevention programs. She is a member of the Aquasasne Coalition for Community Empowerment and facilitates the Aquasasne Youth Coalition. Nichelle believes that youth are the key to the future. When our youth live in healthy environments, engage in coalition efforts, have access to opportunities that build positive social connections and develop strong identities, youth will have a positive outcome. All right, and I'll leave the floor to you, Chanel. You can share your screen now whenever you're ready. All right, now uh, thanks. Um, so Sego. Oh, you gotta give me give me the ability oh, to I thought, <laughs> sorry. That's all right. Um, Sego, uh, I usually like to introduce myself with my language. So um all right. So basically what I said was um, I'm honoring you all, like thank you for being in our presence kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> that my remembering to share my sound right now. <laughs> Um, that my uh, name is which means um, I use my, my, my words to um, bring people in or to make them feel comfortable, basically is how um, I was told what my name meant. Um, so hopefully I'll get to do that with you guys today, especially when we're talking about, you know, community level prevention programs during this pandemic and feeling separated from a lot of people. Um, I'm hoping that with this presentation and the ideas that we can, you know, expand on that. And I can, I can do that, you know, <laughs> I have that ability. So... Um, unfortunately, Michelle was not able to present with me as well, but she did a fantastic job in um, setting up this presentation and um, such a wonderful asset to have had throughout this whole pandemic situation. Um, so I'm very happy that, you know, she was able to put something together so that way she, a little bit of herself can be in here as well as we have a little video for you and she'll get, to, and, and you'll get to meet her for that portion as well. So I'm from the Mohawk territory of Wakwazasne, and that is, as you can see, probably like the right here where the star is, right up by the Canadian border. Um, this basically, the circle here shows where, you know, we are location-wise when it comes to Ontario, Quebec. We're literally right where Quebec and Ontario meet. Um, and we also have a portion of our community that is on the American side. So we have our, our community is separated by this invisible border of Canada and America. So we have three jurisdictions that we're working with federally. We have our, um, like our own longhouse kind of 
um, government rulings. So we have a lot of different um, ruling when it comes to what's right, what we're going to do, how we're navigating our community, even when it comes to healthcare. There's so many rules having to navigate that. When we travel, so right here it has Messina Port of Entry. Basically, we travel about half hour to the east, to the west, Malone, Malone's around here, and then northern up in Cornwall if we choose to, just to get groceries sometimes. Um, so we're a very rural community, but, you know, like, surprisingly, and I love our community because of this, is that we do have a lot of programs that we jump into or are able to work and help out with the community. Uh, yeah, so that's just an idea to give you about where we are geographically. You know, like we have this border cross-secting us. We have programs, American and Canadian sides. We have people living in roughly three jurisdictions just because of the two portions in Canada that we meet. So there's definitely different rules when it comes to that, especially when it comes to alcohol sales. So obviously in New York, it's 21, but in Ontario, it's 19. In Quebec, it's 18. So we have to work on that when it comes to our program, when it comes to our ACVP um, kind of prevention skills. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, how we navigated COVID, and I know everybody's very knowledgeable of this, this COVID timeline and how it all hit. You know, 18th, March 18th for us, I remember that day very specifically um, because that's when we were told like we had to shut down or how services are being kind of distributed. People who needed to work, um, those who were deemed essential were able to work. Um, the density had, like our workplace density had dropped and a lot of people were at home or working from home or trying to figure out how to work from home. Um, some of us, like I know my program, the prevention program, we were trained to go work somewhere else. So those that were marked as essential had to learn a different work skill, I guess. But that didn't stop us from working into our prevention, our prevention skills, you know. So um, like I myself, I was trained to do pharmacy. So I had to bring out the pharmacy medications to our clients. But with that, you know, like I was making sure that we were getting their names, making sure that it was accurate. But also at that same time too, we were like, hmm, all these medications are going out. How about we start utilizing the Terapack? So that way that, um, that's the conversation that I get to have while I'm bringing out these medications. Like this is what Deterra is. This is how we um, help minimize any kind of medications that are basically not used anymore or that their expiration date has hit, right? So um, throughout this time, we're learning how to even navigate that when it comes to um, just with our new positions that we had. Around April or May, we ended up asking Nichelle, actually, one of our prevention educators to come back because um, we noticed that New York State Coalition were still meeting um, and we noticed that there were still like activities and youth are stuck at home and they wanted to do more things, right? So um, that's where we were hitting. So in April, the stay at home order was going on. Um, we had other rules that were effective for us. Um, anything that was essential, any essential services with their um, our businesses, they ended up closing at 9 p.m. every night. And that was like pretty strict. So like they even gave people time to be home by then. Um, we could gather and we're such a tight knit community that, you know, this was difficult. This was very, very um, something we really had to adjust for ourselves. So with that, you know, that created some of those anxiety feelings, that depression feeling, the isolation, even an increase in substance use because you're rushing out to go to those alcohol sales when they stop at a certain time. So you're like, all right, I need to get here. Some of the bars were not even permitted to be open at the time. So, you know, people were just losing some of that social interaction. Um, our outdoor gatherings, they weren't, outdoor was allowed to be up to 50. And then um, we even had a travel restriction um, that lasted for a pretty decent amount of our time to COVID. So, you know, we had a lot of these things that were getting impacted and that 
definitely added to, you know, our risk factors when it came to everything that was building up throughout these months. Um, so with that, uh, after bringing back Michelle, after me coming back from doing the front, front line um, for our health services, uh, we decided, you know, like, how about we start looking at what it is that's impacting our youth? What is it that's impacting, you know, these social and emotional feelings that's going on through the community? Um, especially since, you know, they're stuck at home, they're having to learn all this internet stuff. And sometimes, like, part of our community didn't even have the bandwidth to handle, you know, all the online. So, like, in the Quebec and Ontario portion, we knew that the internet, like their, their internet wasn't as strong as it could have been as for the New York portion of um, Akwesasne. So we knew that some of those youth and those families were having difficulty with that, especially since all of our education went remote. So that definitely made a major impact on that. Um, even attending ceremonies you know for us that was very difficult having to make it virtual felt so foreign and felt so wrong to be part of that um looking at death and loss during this time I mean people were we we were losing people not just at this time we hadn't had any COVID cases but we were losing people naturally but we weren't able to go anywhere to go to these funerals, to these wakes, you know, because people weren't allowed to gather that closely. When we had our people in the nursing homes, that was a major fear, like our elderly in the nursing homes, that was a fear of like, what if they get it through there? So I know we all were dealing with that and that conversation and we were wondering how can we navigate all of these different things that are happening because of COVID and how it's impacting our community especially with our small businesses and them having to close and reduce their hours, what that did to people in their jobs, what that did to their finances. So, you know, we had a lot to think about and a lot to conversate our programs that we worked with. You know, some of them were at very minimal um, activity, you know, so we were really trying to make sure that there was something out there for our youth, which we started our virtual events. By then it was May, well, this one, since we got our prevention educator back in May, we we're like, let's plan, let's plan what's going on. Let's give something or, some, or our family something to look forward to. So our first virtual event that we hosted was the family bike across the Confederacy. And so um, in Akwazasne, we're Haudenosaunee. So we have like our one, two, three, four, five, six, six communities. Um, our six nations, so that's Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Tuscarora, Cayuga, and Seneca. Um, and they weren't literally biking through there, but we navigated the miles so that way they were hitting where all those stars were in, in the flyer. And that totaled about 400 miles. So um, families were able to keep track of what their mileage was. And every single time they hit like one of the star marks were like yeah awesome let's get to the next community so they were able to post those pictures you know every time they hit the star they're like we made it to this many miles and they would send it into us um, via email to show us that where they made it and their unique way as to how they were showing that they were making it across the confederacy and we let that be a month-long activity just because biking 400 miles in maybe a day might be very difficult to some of those little legs. So, you know, we wanted to make sure we gave them time to get those, mi those the mileage in. Our next one that we did was the Lugany and Me. So Lugany, um, I guess when you translate it, uh, means my father. So we have a Lugany and Me lookalike photo challenge. And we had so many responses with this one. It was so fun to see our participants um, twinning with their father or like their male, their favorite male role model. So like some of them, they even like darkened their eyebrows, made them bigger, made their smiles. They even pose the same way. Um, it was so good. We had about 50 submissions, whether it was through ACDP, um, like a, like a hashtag. So we had ACDP, Lugany and Me, if they sent it in via Gmail. Um, so we had so many different 
pictures and picking one was so hard so we were like all right let's put them on like that spinning wheel and that's who our three winners are going to be um so we got to post those out afterwards and we were like yeah this the it was just great the outpour for it was fantastic um people loved that idea and like i like in my bio i um help i help facilitate with the acquisitioning um, coalition for Community Empowerment. And part of that is that we get to participate every year in a, a family color run. Um, this one, we, we had to make it virtual because you know we weren't sure how to do the social distancing at this point. We allowed families to take up um, 200. So we had 200 bags full of like swag from all of our programs, um, individual color packets. And then they, again, had them um, send in their pictures of them celebrating the uh, color run. So they were able to, um, you know, we got to see the color just up in the air. We got to see all of the movement if they could in just one picture. Those smiles were great. And that's usually our biggest activity when it comes to the coalition. So it's so fun to see that these families were really willing to look at these things and wanting to participate. Um, so, again, always something that they looked forward to, to be able to, um, you know, have something during the summertime just to participate in something like that. Typically, um, let's see, it doesn't move too much. So every summer we have a virtual summer program. Um, and with it is usually our time to interact with the youth. It's our time to interact with our cultural artists and leaders and educators in all sorts of different ways, right? While we're doing this, we're utilizing um, the healing of the canoe curriculum. So we get to combine all of those, all of those activities and make sure that um, what's happening is they're getting those life skills, but they're also being able to incorporate it and detail it with some of our own cultural activities and knowledge. Um, this year, a challenge, absolutely a challenge, um, making it a daily kind of thing. Normally we get to meet with the youth like nine to 12 times in the summer to be able to do that typically in person. This one, we had to shorten it, um, but it also gave us time and opportunity to um, focus on our college students, you know, the ones who they weren't able to work for the summer, you know, um, the ones who weren't able to have something to look forward to in the summer, or get them through to the next semester. So we felt like it was necessary to be able to give those college students time to, especially with these different types of um, information sessions or something that they could look at or maybe something they didn't realize um, that they could participate in, even if it was learning how to make a basket, if it was how their first time making a corn hostel. Um, we even engaged a couple of our artists who are very, very knowledgeable in our local medicines and learning how to use them as teas or even just like us sell. And we also had um, a painter in our community, um, very knowledgeable in the different pottery symbols, the beading symbols, but she utilizes those symbol, the symbology and puts them in her paintings. Um, so that's Victoria Ransom. And she um, also, I say also, <laughs> but she also um, incorporates the language in there. So the Ganyageha language gets to put in there and what that means. So she gets to create these awesome pictures with the youth and what they represent and what that represents to them and gives them empowering words for them to incorporate into their pictures. So that one we got to do for a good four days. We gave time for the youth. We gave time to the college students and those were information sessions. And then we sent them home with all the things that they needed for these activities but we put every single educational activity, um, like the basket making, corn husk doll, et cetera. We put those all on a USB because they were pre-recorded with one of our local TV stations and they were pre-recorded to do these educational videos. So that way they can stop whenever they needed to, go back, be able to look at how they're doing it and figure it out for themselves. 
with the help of that video in order for them to see how to do these different things. Um, that was awesome to see some of their, their um, activities. We also did a TikTok challenge. That was fun. You know, I, we had them do a TikTok dance to Justin Timberlake's Can't Stop the Feeling. And that was just super fun to see families and kids do their own thing in that situation. Some of them were on like jumping around trampoline. So it was super fun to see them do that. And then we had a friendship day, um, which is widely celebrated in our community, um, you know, just to acknowledge those that we have around us. So we got to do that. But what we did was just give them some, um, like a bracelet making kit and that filled up so quickly. Um, but they were able to do that and then give it to their friend. And then they sent us pictures of them and their friends with their bracelets together. So, I mean, super cute, but it was something for them to have hands on, basically get them off the screens, get them something to do. And then just a fun, creative way for them to give a gift to their friends to show that they're still connected to them in that way. So now we've moved into September, right? It's all the new school season. Um, at this time, like we've had, still trying to figure out what the academic year is going to look like. This is September 2020. And to me, it feels like it's like two, three years ago. And I'm still trying to reel and remember how this timeline went out. Um, our travel radius had, had gotten expanded to 200 miles. Um, and our casino had finally opened up and they were allowing anybody who was in the 100 miles to be able to attend the casino at this time. So that helped out a little bit in some of our um, community finances for that. Um, they were doing a lot of drive-through test clinics. Um, they were doing, they started building out more of our travel radius throughout these months, which was kind of great. Um, and then we started to get our cases in November, which is interesting. Um, so because of these cases coming in, and I know a lot of the time that we did, um, we were experiencing all of this, trying to figure out where everybody can go, what can people do? You know, we're still feeling all of that stress. We're still feeling all the fear of going back to work. People traveling, what's going to happen when they travel? What are they bringing back with us? You know, we're feeling all of those things. And also at this time, we're experiencing losses due to overdoses in our community. Um, and, you know, at that time, our community was presenting their voice to say, hey, we want this to stop. Why are people doing this? this there's too many losses that we've had. I believe we had about three or four losses, but for us, that was too much, especially with the way that we're trying to handle grief and loss to begin with. This was another layer of that grief that we had to feel. And how do we handle that? So what had happened is once the community had that, you know, outcry of like, why is this happening? Um, we as a program felt it was necessary to do a pop-up Narcan training, which is the pictures that we have on here. Uh, this is myself and another one of our outpatient um, counselors. And that's what we did. So while they were setting up and like the community, some of the community people who were setting up and rallying and, you know, having these, I don't want to call them protests, but they were lending their voices to this concern. Um, we set up next to them and, you know, at the time we were just like, yes, we need to do this. We're getting these Narcan trainings. So that way anybody who was impacted by those losses of an opioid, um, that way we can have that conversation too. You know, we wanted to make sure that they were safe. And we know that these opioid overdoses aren't just specifically um, to people who have had an addiction issue. You know, this could be our elderly who are home, who might be isolated and don't remember if they've taken their pills the right way, you know? So we want to make sure that everybody knows that this is how we break that stigma of this kind of loss. So um, this was some of our pictures that we did. We did a very quick Narcan training and over 15 minutes. The pop-ups were about a good three to four hours. And then we just had people show up. We gave them a quick training. This is how you use it. And then, you know, the next group came in. Again, 
during this time though, for like our September, everybody was getting into that. We had did our trainings. Um, we had just had had our trunk or treat, which is a big event too. We have two really huge events and it's our trunk or treat. This time we had the moment of cars. Um, oops, that's later, but I'll show you. Um, but in October, that's when we ended up, well, November, we ended up having bigger cases come up. So we were really worried about these bigger events coming in. So in this lull, this winter time, this fall where everything's starting to close down a little bit more. Um, we did more activities. We wanted to make sure that what we were doing is going to be seasonal. It's going to be something that our families can engage in. Um, we wanted to make sure that, you know, the materials were provided, maybe something they didn't get to have an attempt to even use. So we did this fun, and I love this one. It was a cake decorating challenge. We had the first 20 to register, and we gave them gorgeous kits, right? So we gave them all those fun, fancy tips to make frosting. We taught them how to make a buttercream frosting. And we used an instructional video, again, from Akazasne TV. Um, and we had one of our local, one of our local community members who went to school for um, like the culinary, for the pastry making, for all of that, Kahunina Adams. And she showed the different decorating techniques. So in this video, she's showing them how to properly you know, frost the cake, how to lay out those cakes so they stand up and you can have your three-tier cake. And then she showed them those different techniques. So how do you make those flowers? How do you make this fun little dotted design on these cakes? And how do you change the colors to them? So um, they all got to do that. They had pans, they had all the tools, and they got to learn to make their own cake. Some of those pictures were so gorgeous that we ended up having somebody who had like this wonderful waterfall looking cake. I wish I had the pictures for that and I should have tossed them up there a little bit, but um, I mean, if you want, I can show you what those look like afterwards and I can email them or send them out in some way. Um, obviously Halloween, you know, we wanted to make sure we had something fun who doesn't love something fun and Halloween-y when it came to that? So what we did was host like a um, cookie house decorating. So that was interesting. It was basically the same premise as a gingerbread, but we used Pop-Tarts and cookies and stuff like that. So those were definitely something to experience and enjoy. Always in October, we make sure that we're celebrating Red Ribbon Week. So even the virtual student, the students who were virtual, they got to participate in wearing red, wearing plaid, our Jersey Day. Jersey Day is our biggest day. Um, Tie-dye. Who would be surprised that tie-dye would be the major activity that a lot of people would be doing during this pandemic life? Um, I now have roughly five to six shirts that I'd created just because of tie-dye. Um, and then our last day was Disney Day, which coincided with our trunk or treat. So that was so fun um, to be able to do watching people even in our own job and stuff like that dress up in their Disney characters. So it was it was super fun to see. We also hosted a hoop dancing um, and this was in November. She, um, Farron King, who is actually um, from Akazasne, she was casted for one of the why am I, I cannot remember it. It's those Broadway theatrical, <laughs> I wish I remember what they were called. It's a very French name. Rhonda, if you're in here, help me out, <laughs> type it in. It's um, where they're doing like the acrobatics and the dancing. Um, but she was actually in those um, big broadcasted like out theater kind of activities and she incorporated hoop dancing into those. So we asked her if it was possible for her to sh do an educational video for those youth who wanted to participate to make their own hoops, design them. And then she taught them basic hoop dancing um, dances. So she taught them how to make the ball, the, the earth, the symbolization of the earth, the symbolization of the birds, the eagle, everything like that. Such a good, such a good one. They said um, Chanel, the Circus de Soleil. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's where she was. She was definitely in one of the Cirque du Soleil's. Sorry, I don't know why my, blank, my brain blinked on that one. <laughs> but 
Um, yeah, so Farron King was in one of those. Um, super cool. So they got to deal with a ho- uh, an Akuzasne celebrity on that one. Um, for holiday season, we moved into a family fun basket where we just gave them a bunch of holiday crafts for them to do with family. Um, so it was just fun with that. They had like a bunch of ornaments, any kind of decorations, but we kept it very, um, you know, some families didn't actually celebrate Christmas. They were able to celebrate winter and what that season looked like to them. We also incorporated in some fun time with our youth coalition. Obviously our youth coalition, um, they're able to participate in any of our community events, even our curbside activities. And this one, we specifically made one with our youth, with our youth coalition for them to do something. So they were able to meet up with everybody because they're all very virtual meetings that they got to participate in. And um, while they're having fun and talking, you know, our baskets were made to have them create ugly sweaters with each other. But they also included like chocolate, hot chocolate, um, little snacks. So that way they were just having like a fun hangout session on Zoom for each other. And then when they were done, they were like, all right, here's my ugly sweater. And then they got to wear it and be fun and have like online games with each other. So that was um, something that we wanted to make sure that we were doing and celebrating our youth coalition for even just making it to the meetings because how many times were they online to handle that, right? <laughs> how many times did they get to be online? It was very academic, but um, this one, they got to have something that was fun. So that was super cool. And then uh, we also did a Pop-Tart holiday house. I was very impressed with some of these kids that with their decoration and their skills to be able to keep a pop tart house together and not somehow eat most of it. So um, that was fun too. They, we provided them with like those mini boxes of cereal, um, eight pop tarts that were in, in a box and then icing for them to decorate. And then they were able to utilize all of that to make their own house. So again, another spin on the gingerbread house. So this is fall and winter 2020. Um, oh, right, our trunk or treat. So here's our trunk or treat. We definitely did this differently um, for 2020. Normally we are in person, um, we're standing in a big group, right? And we're all decorated with our trunks. Um, this year, because we were following safety guidelines, um, from our emergency operations center, uh, we were able to have our programs in this centrally located area where there was a street that um, basically bisected where the roads could be like the main road and then there's a back road that will loop around. I know that sounds very complicated, but uh, we wanted to make sure that our community was safe when it came to this particular activity because everyone at this time was wondering, how are we going to trick or treat? How are we gonna get around the community? So what we did was, and you can see these cars in the background, we had everybody in their vehicles and they got to see all the um, tables lined up and act, and participate in this. So we dressed up and then some of the vehicles themselves were like kind of participating and they dressed up their vehicles and they had all these lights on so it was like they got to have their own little kid party in the trunk of the vans or their cars but they got to see all of these different programs wanting to participate and dress up and wave and you know just be there for them so they had something to look forward to and then at the end of this um we call it Margaret Turrent Memorial Way, right at the end of it, they all got their bags of candy. So that way they weren't interacting too much with everybody, but they were able to see and go to something like this. It was so fun to do. Um, you can see here that our ACDP crew and Michelle's in there, she got to be part of, like they dressed up as Greece, so they decorated their own background. And our youth coalition participated and they dressed up as Among Us. They're all in these like, those big one, those big suits that they got to wear. So um, it was just super fun to see that even our youth were like, yes, let's do this. Let's decorate. Let's get in on this. We're going to wave to kids, you know? So it was so fun to know that that's what they were doing and wanting to be a part of. So um, this is just a little bit of pictures that we got from Trunk or Treat. We had so many others who dress up as like Power Rangers or 
such an elaborate background, like zombie Halloween. I mean, Hollywood. So, so fun. Um, and then we get into the new year, right? So the new year, it's still winter time. We're still dealing with a lot of our, our cases starting to spike and starting to grow. And a lot of us are very concerned about this. Um, every day was a new group of um, cases that we we're experiencing. So a lot of them were still dealing with online learning, like our youth were dealing with online learning, but not only were our youth dealing with that, some of our grandparents were home with this youth. So having to teach them technology, that was an increase. Our small businesses were still impacted because of the time, um, because of having to wear masks, because a lot of people were out and about yet. Um, so there was that. It doesn't look like I finished some of these things that were typed out here, but um, that's what we were still feeling in this winter time. And it was such a, you know, we had to experience this whole year already where we're closed down and all of these things are happening and all of these losses have happened and all of, you know, we had that, we had that pause a little bit in our community and, you know, we all felt it. We felt that impact. I'm sure every other community too has felt that impact. Um, especially with the, the quarantining, you know, I've had my own experience in the quarantine. Luckily I have not had COVID, but I was um, exposed. So I had to quarantine and that in itself is a very different psychological thing you have to go through. Even coming back into the community is such a thing where you're realizing how many surfaces you do touch and how much you want to wipe down that surface afterwards. So, um, you know, you're feeling all of those things when you come back into the community or whether you're interacting with other community members. So um, we're really feeling that. When it came to May, we noticed that we had our first zero case you know we heard that we were like oh my god it's finally happening like everyone's calming down everyone's like trying to breathe in that situation so we started you know with our virtual events and all of that anxiety for january we had a family friendly comedy show and that was in the evening time such a good change of pace for what you could do for zoom and i was very impressed on what you could do for a comedy show when it came to zoom um all the comedians were on in their own different field but they were able to talk about what mental health was like but they used a comedy a comedic approach to it um so that was different and it was definitely something that you know gave a good chuckle and you were like yeah i get that one okay i'm feeling that and i think that's what's so wonderful about you know our indigenous communities is that when we laugh, we're feeling it. And it's that gorgeous little, <laughs> you know, that bright, loud laugh. Um, so that helped out a lot during that winter months when everything is still. During February, we do a culture enrichment week. Um, again, it's pretty similar to like our summer program, but it's very heavy on uh, the cultural activities. So they got to learn to do beaded feathers. Um, they learned to make medicine pouches. Again, more hoop dancing techniques because that was something that they wanted to do. They even learned to make gorgeous little splint flowers. And um, oh, I'm trying to remember what else they did, but it was a lot of really fun um, activities, the way they sent back their videos. So again, we utilized the educational videos. We utilized the curbside pickup of all their materials that they had to pick up. Um, and everybody who sent in their pictures, they received um, some kind of gift too to say, thanks for participating, thanks for doing this for yourself. Um, and we also utilized different um, educational um, presentations from our staff. So they talked about like what alcohol use, you know, the alcohol use, what vaping looks like for their community. And also we practice, um, we work with Holistic Life Foundation. So that was a new program that came into our community at the perfect time. And they were providing different mindfulness and breathing techniques and everything that could help you with that feeling of anxiety or just feeling so separate, but bringing you down and keeping you mindful about what you know, you're grateful for. So we got to help them reach out to the different youth that maybe they don't get to reach out to. So that was super, super fun to do. So 
of course, we like to play with um, Dr. Seuss's birthday and because we couldn't really do too much like we normally would where we're jumping into the schools and we're, you know, promoting reading and stuff like that. Um, we basically put on like at our Dewatahita walking trail. Um, so that's a paved trail that's in our community. And we put up different characters up at the trail, but they had to, it was almost like they did like a scavenger hunt. Um, where they had different riddles and then they had to match it to the correct character. And then when they were done, they sent in their submissions of what it was for a chance to win a prize. So, you know, they got to be outside. The trail is paved, so they were safe on that one. And they got to just, you know, play around with the Dr. Seuss and something else to look forward to. In April, we did a prescription drug take back. This was actually one of our most um, participated in a prescription um, drug take backs. Um, not only did we host that, but during that time, we paired it with nar more Narcan training. Um, I'm trying to remember what the numbers were for that one, but it was definitely a really well attended um, event to happen. We usually do this on Saturdays, you know, a good portion of the day. And I know our police station. We, we work with the police station and I know that they had just gotten this big command center. So they got to utilize that and show that off and definitely kept our, our, our workers there pretty warm during this March month. Um, I mean, sorry, for April. Surprisingly, it was very cold still a little bit around here. I think we had like a second cold snap around this time. So that was definitely helpful. <laughs> um, in May, we did a mom and me paint and plant. So this was cute. We had them pick up again curbside, curbside um, baskets that had terracotta pot, pots. Um, there were seeds and soil, and we included some paint supplies. So they got to decorate their um, terracotta pot, and some of them were just showing off like how it was like their mom and them, and waiting for the plants to grow, who it could be their hair and stuff like that. So um, that was fun. It was fun to see all those different pictures. And we also included a couple um, canvases for them to be able to um, paint as well, because you know we gave them a good amount of paint. So they got to do something else too. We did another Luggany and Me because it was so well received and again, very well participated in. And then we did a donut decorating with dad. Um, so this was new, a curbside pickup, of course. Uh, we got some plain donuts and then some frosting and decorations. So we wanted to see how they were gonna decorate their donuts with um, you know, their dad. So that was super fun. Um, <laughs> so in this time too, we're still experiencing zero cases and we're like, oh my God, this is great. You know, they're relieving some of these restrictions that they had on us. Our travel restriction has been released um, some of our small businesses are opening back up if they could. Um, and then we're looking at all the vaccine conversation too. So there's that going through. So we're like, all right, everything's good. You know what we're gonna do? Let's host something for the summer program, but let's see if we can get this in person because we want to have that in-person interaction. So our first one that we felt would be super good to have um, was to focus on our college students because we didn't want them to go back to college without having something you know we liked the interaction that we had before so we have wonderful and I love Akwazesne for this um, but we have wonderful basket makers in our community so we do like a fancy sweet grass basket and um, um, so we work with Carrie Hill from Chill Baskets. She's very, she's, she's known, she's a very well-known basket maker. Um, she's in different museums and stuff like that. So she always works with us and we love working with her because she's ready. She has all these different ideas for them. And what we, she suggested was maybe a from scratch basket making. So what they did was they learned to pick sweet grass. So she invited them to their, her property and learned to pick sweet grass. And then she taught them how to split that splint so the black ash splint right that's after it's pounded from like um those who are knowledgeable to be able to do that but she was able to show them how to clean it how to prepare it how to break it down into these beautiful little 
um, delicate ribbons of splint and then make these baskets. So that's what we hosted for our college students. So they learned to do that by themselves. Like, this is how I'm going to clean it. And they learned that it's not some, here's a quick kit for you to do. There's work that goes behind it, right? And at that time, we were also planning on doing our Healing on the Canoe Youth Summer Program. We wanted to, normally we would have them out on canoes, but like the big 16 person canoes. But at this time, like we didn't know how to maintain the social distancing and we didn't want them out in the summer heat the humidity in their masks on the water so we wanted to make sure that you know we still kept to theme and we had all these presentations come in again all the artists and stuff like that so we got them going into that i'm going to show a quick video from oh so sorry not yet. Um, here's some of the pictures from the college students. So this is one of the small baskets that they made. So they got to learn how to make the small basket themselves. There's another picture um, of one of the college students actually splitting the splint. And then the bottom one is Carrie Hill <laughs> um, showing another one of the college students like where to look for the sweet grass or what to pay attention to when picking that. These others are our summer program from our youth summer program. So we had our tribals come in as well as the Canadian side police station. So, um, and they talked about vaping and they got to sh show off their, uh, you know, with the, with the driving, with the goggles and stuff like that. So they have bikes with that. Um, this is Victoria Ransom showing the painting for our youth. And then this is their end result. I wish I could zoom this in. It's so gorgeous. Um, at the time, the residential schools, all those losses that, you know, we got to experience from the residential schools that, you know, that was impacting our youth as well. So they made this orange hand on their portraits and they talked about that and the importance of why that's impactful. And so um, they all had their own design based on that. So Victoria Ransom definitely brought in some of those gorgeous pictures for that. So here's the college student video. Um, I'm going to see if this works, so hopefully it does. When we're putting our pieces in, we're keeping that in mind so that we're making a start for the bottom of ACDP Prevention provides activities for college students in order to promote a positive, drug-free lifestyle for the college students. Um, just another avenue for them to do something um, hands-on, something cultural, uh, something to bring it back to tie towards. We have a really good partnership with Carrie Hill. She's always done an excellent job with doing presentations for our youth as well as our college students. So anytime that we reach out to her, without hesitation, she's always willing to put on a presentation for our youth as well as our college students. Just nice. So I'm applying pressure with my legs and squeezing this thing together like what happened was I brought in kits that were already prepared for the students to put together so they would get the feel of how to do the weaving and to touch the materials and everything. Yesterday, I invited them to my home to show them how to pick sweetgrass and what it looked like and what kind of environment that the sweetgrass grows in. And then I had some practice strips soaked for them. We came back here to Ajakta. We scraped the splint with knives and then we peeled it with the splitters and we used the gauges to cut them. And a lot of them, it seemed really good because they, they got that hands-on experience. And today what they're doing is they're making their own baskets with the materials that they prepared yesterday. So I think that was really neat. I loved it. Um, I've always wanted to make baskets, learn how to do it. I never had the opportunity to ever be around it or even a try. I would look up stuff like on YouTube and it's not the same at all. And just doing like hands-on work is really fun. I think it's, it's getting back to like our cultural ways, uh, doing stuff more hands-on and really like learning how to do stuff like on your own if you really wanted to. Yeah. yeah, so that was an example. I hope it, the sound went through, but that was an example of like some of the videos that we do for follow-up when it comes to some of our activities. Um, like we said, Carrie Hill, you know, always part of, oops, <laughs> always part of our stuff. Um, so that was some of our, our college students.
um, being able to talk with our college students and get to interact with them. We had another follow-up too with our youth or summer youth program. That video has not been finished yet. So hopefully we'll get to see that. And if you ever wanna look at some of our videos, they're definitely on um, Akuzasti TV's YouTube station. So if you wanna look that up, there's some of our some of our programs and some of our activities that get put up on there too. So we're still in our summer, right? We're still in our virtual activities and we're like, okay, we can finally get color run going. Cause we're like, we have our zero cases, we're good. And we're getting ready to prepare for this sum, for the color run. Um, we have this out, we have all our programs ready to do this. And like, we're, like I, you know, we're all still dealing with COVID turns out we end up getting an update with four new cases because of Delta variant. So with that, it was decided, mm, we're going to delay this. We're going to delay our color run. Um, yeah, more cases showed up. And we are now in August 30th, which has happened the beginning of this week, where we had to ask all those who have signed up for our color run, to pick up our bags and then they're doing it their own virtual way right so at this time like i'm just saying like regardless of what we do we're making sure that we're one making sure that our communities are always safe and that we're always making sure too that we're going to be flexible and it can be so difficult to be able to have to practice that flexibility but it's very very possible to do so again, we got pushed back from having that little taste of in-person to back to being curbside virtual, which is fine. You know, we anticipated that. So we were we also hosted a watermelon carving contest and we had to design your own birdhouse and bird feeder um, kind of thing. So this is also a very quick video. Hopefully I'll be done soon. <laughs> Sum up, we did a lot of virtual activities because of COVID, a lot of curbside pickups and supplies. You do not think about how many supplies are needed extra from all of that. Uh, the time that took into instructional videos. So planning with those artists, then planning with Aquas TV to be able to get everything together and out in time, uh, making sure that it was actually able to follow. You know, like that's a lot of um, edits and stuff like that to deal with taking phone calls to register for our activities, um, emails, participants sending in pictures, videos, and making the videos of completed projects like what we just saw, um, and then providing those gift baskets for drawings and awards for the photos, and then creating evaluations and following up on evaluations. So 
it was a huge learning opportunity for all of us. So when it came to our evaluations, you know, we started off in the fall. Okay, here's your curbside, pick it up, send us a picture, any communication follow-up was there. You know, this was awesome. Our, our kids loved it. In the winter, like, how do we build up our evaluations? How do we maintain proper data for this? So, um, you know, we included those pre-recorded videos from artists and community members and then gave them to those artists to see, like, well, here's where, how this worked out. We kept track for registration when they came to phone call. We had a paper list. We're doing name, email, picture sharing if it's okay. And then a picture response. And again, the email communications follow. When it came to our summer, we were ready. We figured it all out. We're like, okay, our activities are in person. They could be curbside pickup. Registration, we advanced ourselves and went into online and put it on Teams. So we all hit up all those things and were able to look at it. So we got our name, the email, the phone number. How are they participating? What are those ages look like? And then we followed up with that with our Google form so they could all work on to ask like, how many family worked on in this activity? What were those ages? How many hours did it take? on a scale how likely would you participate in future activities and then tell us the experience completing the activity we want to know more about this like what did you like what didn't you like what were the challenges and if they had any other future activities and a lot of them had some great um future activities that we could definitely expand on and look forward to so that was again all learning all virtual learning and how we can work in that kind of setting so sharing information, we definitely utilize Facebook. We definitely use social media, our local radio station, our local TV station. So thankful that the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe communication keeps track of all these. So we get to say how many times was this flyer shared? Um, especially knowing that we had to change color run three different times. And then we also utilize our ACDP prevention Instagram page. So if you want to follow us, definitely hit that up. Um, so it's just been great having all of these different sources to promote all of our activities and definitely a col collaboration is key, right? We would never have gotten any of this done if it weren't for all of our local artists, if it weren't for, um, our local stations, anything media related, anything very different that the youth have always wanted to get involved in, like learning how to make cornbread or even just our places in the community, like a jukta, that's by the river. That's what that means, by the river. And Janine Rourke, she has this gorgeous place that has like three different venues there, usually used for like weddings, but this we got to use for the summer program and it's by the water. So it's right on the river and we got to use that a little bit. So, you know, being able to be mindful of all those different resources that we had in our community was able to make all of these things happen. And we wanted to make sure that, you know, we utilized them, that we got that information out and they got to see those faces that they get to work with or who they get to be inspired to be or who they want to grow, be when they grow up kind of thing. So it was just fun to have all of that information, education be provided to our youth and our families and our community. So with that, I am going to say goa, which means it's a big thank you. Thank you for having me here and have this opportunity to speak. And I, you guys got to see Nichelle talk a little bit, so that's cool. Um, I guess that's it. Any questions? I'm done. I'm going to stop screen sharing. <laughs> yes, um, if anyone would like to um, ask any questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself or put it into the chat box and... Um, they said great examples and thank you for sharing.